All right, Money News now. Richard's off, so hello to you, Chris. Hello, Avery. Listen, tell me, uh, Canadians really liking to invest in lifestyle stocks. Yeah, it's true, and uh, I want to start by saying that Bloomberg has looked at the stats, and already 2017 is a little better than 2016. So nine companies in total have raised at least $100 million Canadian as they went public. Canada Goose is the best performer. That stock up about 60% from the offer price. Another stock that's sort of bucking the trend, the downward trend, is Freshie. Um, now, on the flip side, and this is sort of interesting, Med Relief, which at one time was the largest pot producer to go public, it actually had the worst first day performance for a Canadian IPO in 16 years. It was down 22%. The stock today, though, up by almost 6% after an upgrade. So we're only halfway through the year as far as IPOs go, but it sure looks like the lifestyles are definitely more favored. All right, so listen, uh, we know there's been a whole lot of interest in the real estate market right across this country, especially in <laughs> Toronto. Some changes on the way for real estate agents. That's right, and uh, these changes are around a practice known as double ending, and this is where the real estate agent actually represents both the buyer and the seller in a single transaction. Uh, earlier this year, of course, the Liberal government dis did announce a 16-point housing plan that included that 15% foreign buyer's tax. So now the government is reviewing the rules for real estate agents to ensure that consumers are fairly represented. The government also looking for public input on this. Um, and there's also discussion about an increase in the maximum fines for salespeople and brokers who violate the code of ethics. All right, on this uh, real estate issue, can you tell me a little bit about Airbnb Lux? Yeah, this is kind of cool, and it's not really being talked about publicly. This is something that's sort of being tested. It's a new rental service of a more upscale nature. Uh, so the service would offer mega homes, mansions, pensions, and the like. And we are hearing that they'll be inspected, so this is going to be closely watched. Um, and it's apparently going to start in some markets by the end of the year. And if the tests go well, then the service will be expended, uh, extended. But here is the Canadian connection in all of this. This idea essentially comes after Airbnb's acquisition of Luxury Retreats, which was earlier this year. Now, Luxury Retreats is a Canadian company. Yeah. And right before its sale, it listed more than 400 villas and vacations home, vacation homes. So those listings not yet featured on Airbnb. So it's sort of going to spin this Canadian company into its Airbnb website. Okay, R2-D2, pretty cute little Star Wars character. <laughs> I don't know that he's worth three million bucks. I know. I wondered about this when it, it sort Chewbacca, of stood out for maybe. me. Chewbacca, maybe. Chewbacca, yes, but R2-D2, no, I don't think so. Well, he's a he's a droid, right? It's can it's you make very... him work for you? Maybe then he's worth three million. He sold yeah. for three million at auction. That I don't know. Now they were expecting about two million, so they did go above asking, um, and the droid was actually put together. It was parts of the droids that were used in the original sequel, so that's why there was quite a value to it. Uh, 43 inches tall, uh, and it sold for $2.76 million. It was actually the most expensive item sold in this particular auction of Star Wars memorabilia, which included a lightsaber and Darth Vader's helmet. <laughs> I would have rather had the helmet. Um, the lightsaber's no fun to kind of play with. Yeah, that would be good too. Um, and there's no word as of yet. I just checked. There's no word on who bought the R2D2. Okay. Uh, I can, this is a device that has changed everyone's life that I know of the iPhone turning 10 years old. Yeah, and here's something to think about. Let's talk about the stuff that it's pretty much eliminated. We don't really need cameras anymore, we don't need calculators. We True. Don't Calendars. Need compasses we don't need watches anymore we don't need to look into other people's eyes and make contact with them anymore yeah we, we don't just have stare to at talk, our phones right exactly <laughs> we don't have to talk we just text yeah exactly so the iPhone hit stores 10 years ago today now the first one if you can believe this had a three and a half inch display that would be devastating in today's age uh, there was no physical keyboard um, there was an Apple design touch base user interface um, and uh, at the time, it was really quite something. Uh, Steve Jobs, who was the CEO of Apple when this was uh, announced, 
did promise that it would change everything. And he was right. He was right. He, he was absolutely right, although some speculated it would fail. Now, as far as the next iPhone goes, still some rumors around here, yeah. uh, around this device. Some saying that it's being touted as sort of an anniversary iPhone. Uh, reportedly set to undergo some changes. And among the rumors, the home button is going to be gone. So ah, interesting. Okay. Super. Thank you so much, Chris.